Oh no. Don't interrupt me, That's Echo. Don't interrupt me, Echo. Can't open it. Hulk mode. Hello, can you see me? Hi, I'm Elle, and welcome to my ethical fashion YouTube channel. I bring very cool, chaotic vibes to ethical fashion. As you saw in this YouTube title, today I am dyeing clothing. I have all these dyes with the right dye. I don't know if I'm saying that right 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 <laughs> but i used to work at a thrift store and i saw these come in and i was like oh i need to use these and it's been a year and i want to do this before i move i have a bunch of white clothing that is just they've just been laying around what they have what i don't know why they've just been taking up rent money but i can dye them royal blue i can dye them scarlet yellow kelly green kelly wakasa purple and black and let me bring all the clothing okay so this is all my clothing that's been taking up my rent money i no longer need this clothing i'm like if i'm just gonna donate it why not test out these dyes and see what happens and if i like something i can just keep it and it'll be a win-win situation and if i don't like it i'll just donate it and no one's ever gonna know that i fucked up the clothing because they're only gonna see what is the result but Fingers crossed that everything turns out right. I recently heard about chat GBT's new feature where you can talk to the chat GBT. It doesn't have a name, but if you go to the app, if you download the app and you open it, there's going to be a little small feature that looks like a headphone. So you press that and this pops up. Ooh, and then you can talk to it. Okay, are you ready? Hello. Hello there. Uh, I'm ready to chat whenever you are. I'm filming a YouTube video right now where I'm dyeing clothing with right liquid dye. Do you have any opinions on that? That sounds like a fun and creative project. Dyeing clothing with liquid dye can give your garments a unique and personalized touch. Just be sure to follow the instructions carefully to achieve the desired results. Uh, and experimenting with different colors and techniques can add an extra flair to your YouTube video. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I completely forgot about the instructions. <laughs> so I'm like, let me read it. Do you have any ideal ways on how to dye clothing with right dye? Here are some tips to help you dye clothing successfully. One, pre-wash your fabric. Make sure the clothing item is clean and free from any dirt or residue before dyeing. Two, choose the right dye. Select a fabric dye that is suitable for the type of fabric you're dyeing. Different materials may require different types of dye. Three, prepare your dye bath. Follow the instructions on the dye packaging to prepare the dye bath. This usually involves dissolving the dye in water and adding any necessary fixatives or additives. Four, use proper dyeing techniques. There are various techniques you can use to achieve different dye effects, such as dip dyeing, tie dyeing, or ombre dyeing. Research and practice your chosen technique before starting. Five, test your dye. It's a good idea to test the dye on a small, inconspicuous area of the fabric or on a test swatch before dyeing the entire garment. This will help you gauge the color and ensure that you're happy with the result. Six, follow the instructions. Pay close attention to the dyeing instructions provided by the manufacturer, including recommended dyeing time, temperature, and rinsing procedures. Seven, rinse and dry properly. After dyeing, Rinse the fabric thoroughly to remove any excess dye, then wash and dry it according to the instruction. This will help set the dye and prevent color bleeding. By following these tips and taking your time to properly prepare and dye your clothing, you can avoid any mishaps and achieve beautiful results for your YouTube video. Interesting. Okay, so I have a bunch of like clothing. They're all made from different material. So obviously I think I'm just going to do a standard process for all of them because I don't have the most time. I like the tie-dye idea, but I think I just want to have everything be the same color. And I'm probably not going to pre-wash the clothing just for sake of time. I have my like setup ready. So I think I'm going to get started. Okay, so I'm currently filling up the bucket full of water. Have fun and happy dying. Yeah, I don't want to die right now, but like me, me, myself, I don't want to die. So I think I'm going to put the phone down and pause you for a second. 
The first piece that I'm going to dye, it may be this really beautiful sweater that looks like this. It has a lot of different sequins on there. It's from the brand Alfred Dunner. I can't talk. It's 70% acrylic, 30% wool. I'm kind of worried about the wool because wool doesn't really retain water well and I don't know how well it'll do with the dye. Maybe you can ask Echo. I call him Echo. Hello, hi, I'm dyeing clothing right now. And I'm wondering if wool is a good material to dye clothing with the right liquid dye. Can you give me some tips? Dyeing wool can be a great way to add color and personality to your clothing. Here are some tips for dyeing wool with liquid dye. One, use acid dyes. Wool is a protein-based fiber, so it requires a special type of dye known as acid dye. Make sure to use dyes specifically formulated for wool or protein fibers. Two, pre-soak the wool. Before dyeing, soak the wool fabric or garment in warm water with a mild detergent. Uh, this helps remove any dirt, oils, or finishes that could interfere with the dye absorption. 3. Choose the right dye method. Depending on your preference and the effect you want to achieve, uh, you can dye wool using immersion dyeing, hand painting, or even tie-dye techniques. Follow the instructions provided with the dye for best results. 4. Control the temperature. Wool is sensitive to heat, so it's important to avoid using water that is too hot during the dyeing process. Follow the temperature recommendations on the dye packaging and avoid wool. Five, rinse thoroughly. After dyeing, rinse the wool fabric or garment thoroughly with cool water to remove any excess dye. Take care not to agitate or wring the wool too vigorously, as this can cause felting or distortion. Six, dry with care. Gently squeeze out excess water from the and reshape it while damp. Lay the wool flat to dry away from direct sunlight or heat sources to prevent shrinking or distortion. Okay, so I put the wool in warm water and put some dish detergent. So I think I'm just gonna do purple. There's like red, I don't know. I think purple, I think it's gonna turn out like lavender. I don't have gloves, okay. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to ruin my clothing. So I think I saw in another video that they were saying half a bottle for one pound of clothing. So I have a lot of clothing though and I want purple. So let me see. I'm just going to do a little bit because I also want it to be lavender. Dang, okay. I feel like I'm going to take off my current outfit because I don't want to dirty my pretty clothing. Oh, you know what? Before I go change, how long should this dye solution for the wool sweater stay in there for? Typically, you'll find recommended dyeing times on the dye packaging or in the instructions. It's essential to monitor the dyeing process closely and periodically check the color saturation until you achieve the desired shade. It doesn't say on there, so what would you recommend? Since the dye packaging doesn't provide specific instructions for the dyeing time, a good starting point would be to let the wool sweater soak in the dye solution for about 30 minutes to an hour. That's a lot However, it's essential to periodically check the color saturation during this time to ensure you achieve the desired hue. Keep in mind that the longer you leave the sweater in the dye bath, the deeper and more intense the color will be. If you're unsure, you can always start with uh, a shorter dyeing time and adjust as needed based on the color intensity you observe. Um, I said on the instructions to put salt. What is the salt for? Like, am I cooking right now? Like, what is this for? Adding salt to the dye bath is a common practice when dyeing fabric with certain types of dyes, such as fiber reactive dyes or direct dyes. Salt acts as a mordant, which helps the dye adhere to the fabric and enhances color absorption. It essentially helps fix the dye to the fabric, resulting in more vibrant and long-lasting colors. No, you're not cooking, but you're definitely enhancing the dyeing process. Just follow the instructions on the dye packaging regarding the amount of salt to add to the dye bath. Well, this isn't like for a grade, you know? <laughs> so we're good. I shook it about 16 times, so I think we're good. I'm gonna change out of my clothing. I'm gonna pause you and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. This is my grandma green sweater that's gonna protect me from the dye. You know, I tried so hard in protecting the shirt and I broke it. I broke the strap of the shirt. <sighs> okay, so I added the salt 
to this. It's been soaking. I should probably mix it, mix the salt in there. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. And right now it's this really pretty purple that I really like. I'm probably going to keep it in for like five more minutes. So moving on. Don't interrupt me, That's Echo. Don't interrupt me, Echo. Mixing the salt into the dye bath will ensure that it's evenly distributed and helps maximize color absorption. I mean, you man explaining. Your like man purple, explaining. Keeping the sweater in for another five minutes should deepen the color nicely. Sounds like you're making great progress with your dyeing project. Okay. I'm gonna pause him because he feels like he's in a very, I feel like he's in a very positive mood. This is a really cute top that's white. It's almost like a tank top sort of thing. I'm probably gonna do a red color. It's made in India. So the material is 100% cotton. So I'm gonna put this in warm water and do the same thing. Put the salt in there, 16 shakes to be exact. Mix it together and leave it for, I would say 15 to 20-ish minutes. I'm probably going to be putting something else in there i have this size 8 usa shirt that i've never worn it has some cute little flap sleeve feature here but i'm gonna put that in the same bucket with the same amount of water and the same amount of salt you can't open it hook mode perfect Okay, so the second batch is in. It definitely dyed my hand. Um, if you want a more orange red hue, use the scarlet liquid dye. I don't even know if these are still in production, if they're still selling them. Because I bought them secondhand, I don't know if they're like super vintage or not. I definitely should put some gloves on. <laughs> um, I've learned my lesson so far. It looks like I killed someone. But yeah, I'm gonna ask Echo, should we put the dye, the liquid dye first and then the fabric or should we put the fabric in to the water and then the liquid dye like I've been doing? When dyeing clothing with liquid dye by RIT, it's best to follow these steps. One, dissolve the dye in warm water. Start by dissolving the liquid dye in warm water according to the instructions on the dye packaging. This allows the dye to fully mix and dissolve, ensuring even color distribution. Two, add the fabric. Once the dye is fully dissolved, add the fabric you want to dye into the dye bath. Make sure the fabric is fully submerged and agitated gently to ensure it absorbs the dye evenly. Three, optionally add salt. Depending on the specific dye formula and instructions, you may need to add salt to the dye bath to enhance color absorption. I should have listened to the instructions since the beginning and probably should have put gloves on. Ah! <laughs> okay, thank you, Echo. If you need any more assistance or advice as you continue with your dyeing project, feel free to ask. I really need to go get gloves. Let me look for gloves. <laughs> um, and then that's gonna, the purple sweater is going to keep dyeing for another couple minutes and then show you the result. So I have these Calvin Klein jeans and they're also 100% cotton. They're beautiful actually. So I think I'm gonna actually color these Kelly green. Is this like a light green? Hey, Echo, can you describe what Kelly Green looks like? Kelly Green is a vibrant and vivid shade of green, reminiscent of fresh grass or lush foliage. It's a bright and lively hue with a slightly yellowish undertone that sets it apart from other shades of green. Uh, imagine the color of a lush green meadow on a sunny spring day or the vibrant leaves of a healthy plant. Uh, I think I broke my teeth trying to open this. Anyways, I'm gonna move forward with these <laughs> pants and dye them sage green i filled up the water already i'm gonna put the salt in and then the dye and then the pan so i don't mess up the pants look at my <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so i'm gonna let those pants sit for 15 minutes can you see me so i'm gonna take this out and just let it run okay so here is the result i love the lavender color on it i bought this because i really wanted an oversized vintage sweater and this is really quite beautiful. It's it's so grandma-ish and pretty. I don't know if I'm gonna wear it or if I'm gonna keep it, um, but I'm gonna dry this. I only let it stay in there for 15 minutes and then I rinsed it. Hey Echo, are you supposed to rinse the liquid dye out of clothing with cold water, temperature water, or hot water? Uh, when rinsing clothing dyed with liquid dye, it's generally recommended to start with lukewarm water and gradually decrease the temperature to I got it, I got it, perfect. My overthinking was in action right there. Okay, so I think we're gonna check in with the red 
scarlet dye. So here's the result of the shirt. It's definitely not a pink. It came out kind of like a tie-dye effect. I think it's the way I folded in the shirt. It was all bundled up. I went like this and then I threw it into the water. So maybe that caused accidental dyeing. It may have been also because it was doing the process wrong. I guess follow the instructions and place the shirt not so bundled in there. I think it may have just been the lightweight condition of it may not have absorbed the dye really well. But it's a really strong color as is. It's just not, not ideal. I'm definitely not wearing this, but it is an interesting look. With this sort of thicker material, the color did retain a little bit better. It's not blotchy at all. So I think it was just the lightweight feature of the shirt that allowed it to be a little bit more tie dye -y. But this one turned out really cute, really orange. It really did elevate it to a whole different vibe than before. Say I would probably wear this if I needed to, but it's not my style. So I'm just gonna let it air dry and Donate it. <laughs> oh, you know what? I just noticed the only thing that got botched was this little dark spot right there, if you can see. I'm kind of learning that this is just like trial and error and it's not perfect. If you want to preserve your favorite shirt and don't want to mess up, that's kind of an unrealistic thing to expect because this is just like all very unpredictable. You don't know where and how the fabric is going to react to the dye. You can control the process, like I'm trying to control it, but it's a little bit unpredictable because you don't know how things are gonna actually end up, so. Just a little warning, just a little warning. Oh my god, I love them. They're not size 10. What size are these? These are huge. Ooh, I think they do fit, but like big. I think I got the dye on me. <laughs> Can I bleach these? Okay, so I put some spray for stains on my pants. I got the dye out and then they're in the dryer so you may hear the dryer in the back. I averted a, a little mishap with my favorite pants, which is a danger. Do not wear your favorite stuff while doing this. I'm gonna go put my dyes in my room. Should I take a thumbnail right, in right now? Cute. I should have done this with my nice clothing. <laughs> Does this look awkward? Maybe I should flip this one over so you can see the brand. Oh no! It spilled on the floor. Dang! Oh, look. Freaks of nature! Dang! I think I got the thumbnail. Hurts. Oh my gosh. So I've always saved these for whenever for emergencies. So I'm probably going to put it in this old ranch dressing glass jar with a seal on it for, for the future. And then just squeeze. I tried opening it from the top, but I don't want to risk it. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this. My hands are so messed up. It's not sealing completely, but it's good enough. There it is. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> that was so tiring. Look at the things drying. Don't mind the moving bags. They're just drying over there. Hey Echo, do you want to do an outro for an ethical fashion YouTube channel where Elle, the creator, does weekly videos um, every Sunday and just want to recap how I upcycle clothing using vintage RIT dye, which is like liquid dye on her Secondhand white clothing. Sure. Here's a suggestion for an outro. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video on Elle's Ethical Fashion Channel. We've had a blast exploring the world of upcycling and transforming secondhand white clothing using vintage red liquid dye. Remember, 
Making sustainable fashion choices doesn't have to be complicated. It can be as simple as giving new life to old garments with a splash of color. Don't forget to subscribe to Elle's channel for weekly videos every Sunday, where we'll continue our journey towards a more eco-friendly wardrobe. Until next time, stay stylish and sustainable. Bye. <laughs> Take care, y'all. Peace and love, Elle.